Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All Things Vocal, the vlog. My name is Judy Rodman and I'm your vocal coach today. So today's episode is about what might be wrong with your vocal warm-up. Okay, you've had a sneaking suspicion that with a little work, your voice could be better than you've been settling for. So you decided to find some vocal exercises to improve your sound or help you with your high notes. And you found some, but you discover that at best they're not effective or at worst, they're actually creating tension and limiting your voice even more, leaving your voice feeling strained even before you start to sing a song. What's wrong? Well, definitely there is something wrong. I've got four possible causes. Let's get into them. Number one, you might be doing the wrong exercises for your voice. Self-prescribing can get you into trouble. Just like pharmaceuticals, there are tons of vocal exercises that are offered on the internet, on phone apps, and suggested by well-meaning friends. Some of these exercises done correctly do work. But some of them that have been dreamed up are actually tightening and can even be damaging. Examples would be contorting your face, tongue, or jaw as strenuously as you can. Stretching is good, but stretching any muscle all the way to the nth degree can cause your automatic nervous system to apply a kind of a knee-jerk contraction to prevent tearing. That's a good way to set up tension and even muscle spasm at the temporomandibular joint, the TMJ, and other places. Move your face around and loosen it, yes, but never as radically as you can, and stop before your jaw or face gets tired of the stretching. Another counterproductive exercise is keeping your face, your eyes, and your jaw as still as possible. You know... Once again, I know this is a common admonition by a lot of teachers, but I find it incredibly counterproductive. To test it for yourself, try singing or speaking a short phrase, uh, you know, or a song with a frozen face. And then try it again with a very active face, such as you would use with a baby or a puppy. Let's see. What's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love got to do, got to do with it? I definitely prefer the second way. And yet another counterproductive vocal exercise is vocal fry. Some coaches use this, but I find it terribly counterproductive and fatiguing unless you zip it backwards. Like that. Whatever you do, definitely don't make a habit of using vocal fry in your speaking voice. Another counterproductive way of doing vocal exercises is projecting air pressure for volume, which goes along with a misunderstanding of what a healthy belt is. Your rich and controlled volume should come from a balance of breath support and control, not just support. Your vocal cords, in fact, should never feel the air moving through them. Possibility number two that might be the cause of what's wrong with your vocal warm-up is that you're doing healthy vocal exercises, but incorrectly with bad form. Just like with any athletics basic skills training, you can hurt yourself trying to help yourself if you don't know how to exercise. For instance... You practice tension. Yes, it's great to do lip bubbles and tongue trills. But if you push them, even they can cause tension. And a lot of people do that with these exercises. Why would you want to practice tensing your voice? Another thing you might be doing is that you don't know how to prepare to travel through your vocal range. Scales of all kinds can open up your range, but if you don't know how to, say, lift before you sound, then you'll end up pushing your highs or moving really hooty for your lows. 
And then, of course, you'll perform as you practice. Another thing you might do is think you're strengthening your voice by exercising till it hurts. Just like pumping iron, if you go too far or too long with vocal exercises, even good ones, you can hurt yourself. Here's the rule. If it hurts, stop. No pain is gain when it comes to your voice. It's okay to stretch and challenge your voice, but not till it hurts or strains. The third possibility that might be the cause of something wrong with your vocal warm-ups is that you're warming your voice up too fast. Use common sense here. Like any physical endeavor, if you go from zero to 60, or even to five, if you're really cold, you can do the opposite of warming up. You can tense up. Yes, your voice wants access to movement, but start slow. Get those tissues flexing and get some blood flowing before increasing the exercise's range or level of intensity. If you can't quite do something yet, do not push. Just take a calming breath, back up, and begin at an earlier place in your warm-up until your voice says yes to being challenged. And the fourth possibility that might be a cause of your vocal warm-up being wrong is that you're not doing your vocal exercises long enough. If you've been singing or touring a lot and your vocal stamina is up, you may need only five or ten minutes of vocal warm-up. But if you haven't been singing regularly, or you've been sick, or you just have some mucus build up, or maybe you didn't get quite enough sleep the night before, you might need more like 20 or 45 minutes or even longer. How do you know you're done? Your voice feels flexible, open, and free, and is working like you want it to. I recently relearned the wisdom of taking enough time to completely warm up my voice before performance. I woke up with some gunk coating my throat that just wouldn't give up, (laughs) and I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to do my lead vocals that day. But I kept on slowly and carefully challenging my voice, finally shook the gunk off, limbered up my instrument, and nailed those vocals that day. The same thing happens with my students. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to have a student begin our lesson with a phlegmy or flappy instrument that just isn't working well with kind of a compressed range and and the, the control having issues, and then ending the lesson with their voice feeling warm and flexible, controlled, and singing the song that would have been absolutely impossible to do when we started the lesson. Use common sense. And don't overdo vocal exercises too long or too strenuously if you have a long performance that day. There's a limit to your physical and mental energy, and you're going to need that energy for your vocal main event. Again, at the end of your exercise, you should feel great, not tired. So maybe wait to do the really long vocal exercise maintenance or growing routine until a time between performances. What can you do to ensure that there's nothing wrong with your vocal warm-up? I've got three suggestions. One, next time you warm up, assess how your voice feels immediately afterwards. If it doesn't feel great, get to the bottom of why. Number two, if you don't know how to do a vocal exercise properly, don't do it. Just sing easy songs or do tongue tanglers to warm your voice up. And number three, get a trusted vocal coach to teach you how to do vocal exercises that fit your voice. Speaking of which, if you need me, just let me know. I'd love to help you. Now hit that subscribe button and check out the other video vocal lessons I have for you on my channel. We'll see you next time for All Things Vocal, the vlog.